from Alaska, Grim After Dark, starring John and Danny. What's going on guys? Welcome. I was still curtained up, but then I had to wait uh, very unprofessionally as the curtain in fact did not rise. Um, but <laughs> after last week's major announcement of the Grim Dark Cinematic Universe, we had to pull in Custodes fanboy and Henry Cavill lover Peter the Falcon uh, to discuss the biggest thing to happen in Hollywood last week. But don't worry, still going to be pretty grim after dark. Uh, but before we bring out our first co-host, I want to make sure uh, everyone sees us. January, historically grim after dark, and the one year that we've done it is LVO month, and we always announce that with our Road to the LVO, and this seems like the best time uh, to show off our new Road to the LVO introduction. I drink Dr. Pepper, don't you see? Cause it's the perfect taste for me. That original taste, you know. Go to the LVO. Oh, I, I flipped. Oh, before yeah, shit. You, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> no. Oh. Let's see. There it is. <laughs> Dude, it's always good when we're planning the biggest and best LVO live stream ever to have massive technical problems with a pre-recorded video <laughs> that's about 40 seconds in length. I love we're going to play it again later on, um, but let's just bring in our, our guests. and co That's my first co-host, Danny. I pressed the button. Did he? Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. Love it. Wow, that was faster than normal. Yeah, that, that's very good. Welcome, Danny. That's pretty good. Uh, our Dude, I, I'm live from Missouri, John, today. You Just are. Like to make you are live. Am. Little ammo action. Uh, Little our ammo. second ghost tonight is just a piece of Let's shit. Who just Let's gaslights me 24 um, 7. He's the obsessional overlord of Grim After Dark. He's the bespectacled baron of the Frontline Gaming Network. He is well, pretty much a dick sometimes. Oh, half a finger. Oh my god. <laughs> you are. I'm Welcome, sorry, Ralph. dude. Dude, I love this. Yeah, even the best part here. No, uh, Pete, Pete at this moment, Pete completely silent to the viewing audience. So they can't hear the wonderful things he's saying about Stephen Box's cards. Oh, or... oh, well, now he's he's, uh, he's unmuted now. I hope you're That's happy. Great. Wow. Man, I hope Censorship this is the same already. production team we have for LVO. <laughs> it's well, I've got about one news. sixth. It's about one sixth of it. <laughs> Amazing. Bad news. <laughs> Great. Got some and, bad news for you guys. Uh, tonight, so guys. There's a little Twitter stuff so, going on. So last year, uh, we had our best episode ever, where we never actually talked about 40k. We just talked about our favorite Christmas movies. Uh, Avatar by James Cameron. <laughs> Jimmy C, as he's well known, mm -hmm. um, definitely the greatest Christmas movie of all time. Yeah, you it's know what? Man. I'm really looking forward, uh, Pete, to uh, Avatar three um, when they find the frozen member of the uh, air tribe. Yeah, um, yeah, and uh, thaw him out, and I really, uh, we start that adventure. I really hope yeah. that uh, the Sigourney Weaver character ends up becoming the Moon and her oh. own granddaughter. <laughs> Please, yes, please. Yeah. And setting the, setting this up here to, to complete this discussion, I was going to say we have our own representative in the oceans of Pandora, who you haven't seen before up until this point. Thank God you're only listening to the podcast. <laughs> yes, you have. Smell half a finger. Hi, everybody. How are you? It's been stressful. It's been a stressful beginning. Uh, you guys throw a bunch of fucking shit at me, and then I uh, panic and press the wrong buttons. And I can't see anything because I wear dumb glasses. So, you know, you get what you pay for. And to get, you can get your own pair of stylish Heffelfingers. <laughs> 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 
at LVO, we're trying today, to make guys. some actual merch. Uh, dude, I love that. It's on the whiteboard. They're coming. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> the important thing is here with all of last week's big Hollywood news, we're here to actually talk about Avatar 2, uh, The Way of the Water, uh, which all of us uh, went to see, expecting to hate. Uh, and then we went and saw it. Now this is going to be really hard to make fun of. Uh, to catch everyone up, uh, Jake Sully and Nateri have formed a family and are doing everything to stay together. However, they must, must leave their home and explore the regions of Pandora when an ancient threat resurfaces. Jake must fight a difficult war against the humans. Avatar Wait. 2. Ancient? Dude, I'm literally just reading the film synopsis off of Google. Come on. <laughs> yeah, now. it's okay. I'm glad that you didn't write that because I was going to be disappointed in you that you had prepared so much for this show. Um, uh, <laughs> one of us has to, even if it appears that none of us do. One of us actually does. It's a tremendous amount of work that goes into this, everybody. It's a tremendous amount of work. Just so you know. Yeah, like the but the effort to result is widely oh. misbalanced. Very much. So. <laughs> it is not in sync at all. Uh, I guess to start off here, we're kind of round table around everyone here. What were your expectations going into Avatar 2? Because I know I, for one, uh, was going in as a joke. It's like a sequel's coming out 13 years later to a movie that no one even talks about anymore. Uh, Pete, uh, what were you thinking about Avatar 2? Well, I went into Avatar 2 wondering why I was there. Um <laughs> Uh, leading up to this episode, I was pretty adamant I wasn't going to go see Avatar 2. Um, I was supposed to be working until about five minutes ago, and I chose uh, instead uh, to watch uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, the TV series, and The Legend mm -hmm. of Korra to prep for this, because um, much Great easier series. to get access to. Yeah. And <laughs> then I got sent home from work early during a snowstorm and chose, you know what? I'm going to do this for the guys. I'm going to I'm going to go out of my way to go to the theater after work, drive the two hours to get there and watch this movie. And um, on my way, I received a phone call from Mr. Val Heffelfinger. So we could chat about the episode and about LVO and a few other things. And while I was mm -hmm. chatting with him, I went off the road twice um, during the One snowstorm. for each Avatar movie. One for each Avatar movie. <laughs> and then got stuck on a hill. Um, and then I, I still went through with it. I was like, you know what? Why not? Um, so I went in Rimble. with the expectation that I was going to die um, right up until I pulled into the movie theater parking lot. Hell yeah. So anything beyond dying from driving in a snowstorm makes it just a great experience for you? Yeah, like, I, like it was going to be a, at least a five out of seven from the beginning. Wow. Uh, amazing. Uh, Val, uh, what were your expectations going into this? Because there was some talks uh, that you were upset that we were making you see a three hour long movie. Well, I was very upset. Uh, I'm not going to lie. And I was upset for well over a week while I thought about my terrible fate awaiting me at three and a half hours of of hokey schlock and then um and then, and then i and then i saw it and it, well i guess i don't want to blow the lead on this one no no we don't want to go we don't want, i i i was very upset uh and also rumor had it that that peter uh was uh not actually seeing it at all and was watching the last airbender <laughs> i have I mean, to be I did real before that. we before we move on to Danny, I'm actually genuinely surprised, Pete, that you went to see Avatar 2. Um, I was fully expecting uh, you not to. So I guess I, thank you for inclement weather. I, I walked out of the theater uh, literally 45 minutes ago and would have started wow. recording 10 minutes after I finished seeing the movie if it, if it weren't for having to figure out how uh, microphones work. So That's just fair. so everybody knows, that means that Peter's opinions are now half gone. Um, yeah. because he's not going to be able to hold on to a thought for any longer than that. I legitimately have a goldfish brain. Uh, as <laughs> as I got into my car, I completely forgot what had happened in the movie. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, Danny, what were your expectations going in? Well, so I also drove to the movie, although I did not go off the road. Uh, the roads here were a little bit safer. I drove an hour and a half each way to go to an IMAX theater because I'm like, all right, if I'm going to do this, I might as well do it, do it well. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, I was, I was, I was, uh, going into it with the expectation, like, all right, well, the first one was pretty, but 
okay. I don't know. We'll, so we'll go into this one kind of with maybe an open mind and probably lower expectations than I would normally. I think, Danny, this is the first time you've gone into anything with an open mind. So I'm very impressed that you, you did true. this here. Hmm. You're welcome. Hmm. <laughs> um, so I guess initial initial kind of thoughts coming out of it here. Uh, we'll start with Pete. You're, you're the freshest. Kind of like a yeah. high-level overview of, of kind of what you thought of James Cameron's Avatar 2, Way of the Water. Well, I mean, it was definitely beautiful, which I think everybody kind of expected it would be. The the uh, the graphics, the, the cinematography, everything's gorgeous. Um, there was a lot of care put into the movie itself, um, to building this, this world. Um, which I mean, you had to assume was going to happen because it's been 10 years since the last one. And apparently he's worked on it that entire time. Um, I think what surprised me was that despite all of the tropes that are like present in the movie, there's like, they're set up in such a way that you can't help, but, but be excited. Um, especially around that, like two and a half hour mark. Mm-hmm. Um, like they really build the movie in such a way where like at the two hour mark, um, I found was the first time I was like, man, this is a long movie, but then maybe 10 minutes later, I was like, okay, I still need to see what happens. Like I can't get up. So yeah, it was absolutely. really well paced. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Well, yeah. And we're, we're hearing from chat, uh, very specifically, there's no group audio in the underwater scene, which I'm assuming is Val's scene, uh, because he, that's because I'm drowning. <laughs> drowning with pride uh, Danny would you kind of uh, would you agree uh, with that the, the with Pete's synopsis there yeah I mean you know like many other classic Christmas movies um, this one really came through and uh, in honest like in all honesty the 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 mashup of uh, Free Willy 2 and uh, mm-hmm. Fast and Furious mm-hmm. it's, it's all about family um, made for an extremely enjoyable movie and I will say uh, stop myself and be like, all right, you need to calm down bladder. Like I know you drink <laughs> that large soda, like, but you have to sit through the rest of this. Yeah. Uh, for sure. Chat's coming in with some questions. Are these the aliens that use the same hair to bang as they used to write and talk with animals? Yes. yes, um, yes. Guys, what are your thoughts? Uh, Val, what are your thoughts about the, the kind of the reduction of the hair rate going on? Avatar one, there's a lot of forceful hair joining. Uh, this one, not so much. Why do you think that is? <laughs> Well, I feel like uh, Avatar 2 focused heavily on a much more consensual interaction between both things on screen and both the film and its relationship to the audience. I felt that the original Avatar was rather non-consensual in the sense that it was something that you had to do, whether you wanted to or not. 3D was the thing. Whereas in this one, I feel like we came, we came to each other as equals. Well, just taking the high road over the the animal bonding question. Yeah. So here's my question about that: Is that yeah. bestiality? No, they're they're becoming one with the world. That, that, that's all it is. Which is, by the way, my new line of defense now is like, sorry, officer, is becoming one with the world. So yeah, there was what, definitely... what are they terrasexuals? Like, well, I don't what know what, we... what 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 is that what, even called? What is this going on here? Yeah. What did I? What am I... <laughs> I don't know. Okay. No, nobody knows. All right. I'm just going to keep it on me for long enough to be able to reestablish the audio so that it actually works on this scene, um, which would be, which would be great uh, if that somehow ever happened. But every time I press the button, it doesn't work. So I'm never going to come back here again, guys. Um, I'm just going to be a voice in your ears. Bye bye. <laughs> Well, that's better. I got some space like over here. I got some space over here. Just jump on in beside the water cups. Just don't. Nuts. Yeah. See, Why don't you insert yourself, Al? This week, I'm sure I could do that seamlessly. I wish you guys could see his <laughs> face right now. I wish the people at home could see Val's face because I've seen this face a, a few times. Um, it is definitely a face of a man like that is drowning, like 100. percent Um. Guys, before we go forward anymore, this is going to be heavy with spoilers. Uh, so if you care uh, uh, any bit about Avatar, or if you want to see it without being spoiled, um, please mute your audio. Keep watching. It really does help. Um, but yeah, at this point, we are going to spoil the movie. Just just a little. There we go. Seamless. Well, that's pretty seamless. Yeah, that's beautiful. 
Steel. Like, how was like that? Is that a still image of him? No, no it's, it's not. No, no it's, it's actually me. Wow. That's me. That's beautiful. Here, I'll move my. Um, I'll move. I'll move behind, and then I'll just creep. I like that. Yeah, yeah John, it's almost like your boss is right over your shoulder. Let <laughs> me just 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 push him down. Whoa! Mm-hmm. Oh. Catch. Am I behind the That's chair? Non-consensual. <laughs> yeah, that is. <laughs> We're looking for consensuality um, here, pal. Let's look at so, so some of the high points or low points, I should say. I enjoyed this movie tremendously. Uh, it's well, I think my favorite movie of the last. I think Danny, I'm up to 15 years now. I can't remember a movie yeah. I've enjoyed more. Um, did we need uh, such a long, traumatic wailing scene to remind <laughs> us the, the the wailing is bad? <laughs> look i don't think we did uh i think we all remember a hey, whales are cool they're they're intelligent creatures i don't think we needed the scene of sadly just killing a mother whale but what i will say is that and the Green baby's Beast really yeah and well the baby wasn't killed by them the baby that just was an off screen thing yeah yeah the baby was still alive when we left the mother who was dead at that point um mm-hmm. the uh uh i really liked uh, and I think Greenpeace really needs to step up their act. Um, when are we going to start seeing tribal tattoos on whales you know, on Earth? That's what I. That's yeah, what I want to see. That was pretty cool. Like, that's and important. inside the whales' mouths, like that. Right. <laughs> Don't forget about that. Seemed like a pretty, pretty like. I just ex- want like extra bit of info we needed. <laughs> actually, I wanted I wanted to actually step in here with maybe some yeah. some something okay. that's uh, a little bit more serious than the tone of the room might suggest. With me sitting on John's <laughs> knee like this. Now, um, what I was going to say about the whales is that in general, I think I've come to see uh, James Cameron's vision as something that is uh, very heavily uh, related to uh, the fact that humans, you know, if it's real, you know, and it's and it's, and it's and it's traumatizing, you know, there's just there's just something about it that that makes us that we don't connect with it. You know what I mean? We need we need an allegory. And so what you have are cool ass tribal tattoos, basically Dwayne the Rock Johnson in whale form, mm-hmm. being oh, savagely God. hunted by a bunch of, you know, uh, world adjacent whalers, mm-hmm. um, and, uh, and and therefore that we actually emotionally connected that. If this was say Moby Dick, we we all know we'd be rooting against the whale, but it wasn't. It was Avatar Wait, Two, what? and we felt we felt for. Uh, were, were you, were we you we fell for the whales. Against, were you rooting against the whale in Moby Dick? Well, yeah. Isn't Are isn't you... the whale? Isn't the whale what they're after? Am I wrong? The whale is yeah. a villain. I think you missed the metaphor there. I think you really <laughs> missed the metaphor. I believe there. I just proved my own point because <laughs> it wasn't blatantly allegorical. I get it. I just I assume it. that whales are bad. Sure. I get it. Yeah. One of the most blatantly allegorical books of all time. I get it. Mm-hmm. Did you guys yeah, have part so- two, the way it's why I prefer science talking. fiction, Pete? I, I was uh, watching this. Obviously, there's a lot of suspension and disbelief. How much were you guys pulled out when they could talk to you and understand whales? Actually? Oh, that 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 was like the minute where I was like, I can go to the bathroom <laughs> now. Like the, the the first time the whale talked back, I was like, OK. I can go use the washroom. He this did is figure where... that out very quickly. Yeah, like it was seconds. That kid was just like beep boop beep boop, and the whale's like, "Hey, dude, what's going on, fam?" And I was like, "Okay, all right." How the hell did it's that time. happen? <laughs> they did their secret what did you guys? What did you guys think of the Inception moment where, in order to, um, you know, have sex with the whale, he had to go inside <laughs> the whale. Good. I don't think it's sex. I'm just gonna be honest. Well, the the big difference between I like that. I like that the whale's too. dangly bit was literally inside the whale, and he had to go in there and then you connect know, with the dangly bit. Val, in a lot of animals, including real world whales, the dangly bits are inside until they're not. Yeah. I do well, in like that case, it was consensual this time. That that was very important. Mm-hmm. The whale and mm-hmm. the the navy boy did consent. I mean, he Just, was a little reluctant. He was unsure of, do I go inside this whale's mouth and have sex with it? Is he a little he young chose, for that? He chose yes. I don't uh, know. I They're, believe uh, he's 10, based on, because 10 years has passed uh, from this Avatar to Avatar 2. Uh, but the Navi, uh, age is different. James Cameron is very quick to point out. 
they're you grow up quick. At a very young age. Get you grow up quick when you regularly eat. have sex with animals. Could I just say my favorite character from this movie is the, the uh, marine biologist? Yeah. Um, who is like <laughs> who is whose job is to help people hunt and murder whales, uh, and he hates his life and himself, and he mm-hmm. drinks every night to cope with it. And near near the end, when the giant whale is trying to kill his entire boat, he's like, "Yeah, you're a piece of shit." Yeah, that whale's gonna kill you. I don't care about my life because my life is worthless because of all the evil I've done. I can really It's really to that. Yeah, it's really cool to see guys from Flight of the Concord still get work. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Now if if there was something that pulled me out of it, it was that wait a minute, the guy from Flight of the Concords is from New Zealand. Well, New Zealand <laughs> I mean that, that country. You know what I mean? No. Well, he had an American accent. He did was he was using oh. a very good American accent. So yeah, Val, and then throw you off. And was doing like some kind of Australian, New Zealand, probably accent. an American, just to throw us all. Yeah, off. they probably just whipped it around. They were like, "Let's do this." Do you think on the set, trade like, accents? That's what they said. I'll do an American yeah. accent. You do it Australian. We won't say anything. And James Cameron just thought the flight of the Concords guy was the boat captain. They just yeah, it makes sense. It's all coming together. I think but, the bigger yeah, issue is that. Up. Up. On day one, the boat captain came in, it was the same actor, with a heavy, thick Japanese accent, and they knew that they probably couldn't do that. But he had he had been quite um, deep into his preparation for the role. And he's killed a lot of whales. actor, he's been in Antarctica for the last six months. Just right. murdering whales. Just murdering whales. In Japanese. Uh-huh. Sorry. Scientific research, John. Mm-hmm. That's fair. Guys, what are your thoughts on uh, Unoptonium uh, not being... No one gives a shit about Unoptonium anymore. That's gone. It's whale brain goo now. Mm. Uh, what's the <laughs> well, whale brain goo I, sounds like a Japanese product for the record. I've, I've sucked the uh, cerebral fluids out of many an animal. And, uh, I can tell you that it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't stop. It's why we enough. continue to to share hotel rooms to this day. <laughs> <laughs> you glad you came on peter i am yeah. this is exciting i love the brain uh, goo i i mean um so because of all the almost accidents i did miss that first 20 minutes which is i guess from what i understand like a star wars scroll of everything that's happened in the the 10 years is that it and like the first Jake 20 and- minutes yeah. was them showing people leaving uh natari getting very pregnant a lot um yeah like they did a mm-hmm. lot of sex scenes that I missed. They must have hair banged so many times. S- yeah. Sigourney Weaver, <laughs> uh, Sigourney Weaver's avatar corpse becoming pregnant. Uh, that yeah. was oh, yeah. Diver- yeah, immaculately that was a weird thing. Val, um, uh, is the baby version also voiced by Sigourney Weaver? I think so. Voiced, voiced and played by. So all of this is motion oh. capture performance, and they just animate over the top of the people. So. Those aren't real Navi. <laughs> oh, they're not. What? This is what. This is I thought why that was they had such a big Studios. budget. I thought, I thought they went and found dollars. real Navi for this. <laughs> Joel Atkins, more like uh, Avatar Mary than Jesus. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, I, I, uh, think I get where you're going. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. And now, um, what's our Go. Yeah. Can anyone else? What does anyone else want to like visualize uh, Sigourney Weaver in her mocap suit, pretending to be like a five-year-old girl in very uh, like dude, <laughs> incredibly Sam serious Worthington conditions? Does. Yeah. Sam Worthington uh, to crouch for most of those scenes. Incredible. So, do you think that's a first? Like where we have somebody who's so old playing somebody basically like a child, right? Like that might be a cinema first, right there. Hmm. Are we excluding oh, Grand no, Moff Tarkin? Robin Williams had that movie oh, yeah. Jack, where he played like a kid that aged really yeah, fast. Yeah, but he wasn't really a kid. I mean, he was still an old. He was Weaver still isn't really Benjamin a kid. Button. He, she was a Navi in the movie. I guess you're right. Navi aren't real, Danny. What? No, we. Oh, we did talk about that. My bad. <laughs> we already, I, I take back we already my did point. that bit. Yeah, we sorry. already did we covered that. that. <laughs> where sort of the movie really. Uh, 
excelled was when there was human actors and Navi animations kind of on screen together. And we're introduced to um, our first human character, the, the, the sort of Jar Jar Binks of our story, uh, Spider, uh, mm. the small human <laughs> child who, this, okay, this bugged me very much. Um, so you can't go into suspended animation when you're a baby. So they just left the baby. Yeah. Yeah. These aren't nice people, one. John. John, like, you have to understand, yeah. all of humanity is basically shitty. That's fair. Now. It's hmm. fair. Interesting. In the future, we're all super shitty, except for Sigourney Weaver and mm -hmm. all of her lovers. Um, uh, she has Joel a lot. Shot, Joel and Chat letting us know some other French actress played her five-year-old self and her at 70. Um, and then, Val, apparently you mo-capping for the servo skull also counts. I was playing oh, that's great. That's great. It's wonderful. Okay. Did you know the guy that played Spider, his name is Jack Champion? That's amazing. I don't think that's <laughs> amazing. Uh, guys, Jack uh, Champion was actually something I won in high school. <laughs> spoilers as well for Avatar 5. This whole thing is going to end uh, with Jack Champion and Sigourney Weaver fucking uh, to create unity between humanity and the Navi. Um, that is absolutely so we just where had the that. story is going. We had that Hasn't Jay that already Green happened repeatedly? That was like the yeah, first it, film. But they won't change bodies. It'll be human and Navi together. And you won't believe uh -huh. where the hair goes. Uh, or where it does. The primary True bad or false, guy of this, you're kind of into the idea of the hybrid Navi human penis, which just has all those hair tentacles on them. Well, like, you know, like in the movie, they grab the hand and they're like, he has four fingers. He's a freak. This one, they just grab the shaft and they're like, two balls. He's a freak. <laughs> huh. Do you <laughs> huh. respond to that, please? No. No. Fair. <laughs> I'm just. Do you think the I'm hybrid penis out. opens like the end of the hair? Yeah, that's like, what I'm is saying. Is that like extreme? That's what I'm, that's what I'm suggesting. Oh, so it's like. Is that Blade 2 scenario? Oh, maybe. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. possible. The mouth just was right open. Uh, moving on. Uh, our bad guy for this ex uh, experiment is also from the first movie. It is uh, the, I forget the guy's name, which is also a great way to start, but the military commander <laughs> with the scarred face who dies at the end yep. of Avatar 1. He is resurrected through his mind being put on a hard drive uh, and pretty much uploaded into uh, Avatar body. John, are you talking about Stephen Lang? Talking about Stephen Lang, well, mainly his character, who is Quaritch, I think something like that. Quaritch, Quaritch, Quaritch. Yeah, that's Quaritch. I think that's what they play in Harry Potter. Um, it's yeah, no, that that checks out. No, no, it's Quaritch. Oh, you're right. Quaritch. Okay. <laughs> Stereotypical Space Marine trope number one. Okay. Go. No, I just mean like that's like literally what that oh, character's okay. name is. I think oh. I think they they just have a uh, like. Like a, a, a series of scripts in Hollywood, and you just literally copy pasta from it, and you get that guy. A lot we of video games use it. The Halo guy uses like is that guy. Like there's, it's just that's one of the reasons I didn't like the original Avatar. This version, true. though, very good. What was it you liked about <laughs> this version compared to the original version? Well, let me tell you, John. Much like the Fast and the Furious, at first glance, you would think this is a movie about cars. Whereas, in fact, it's a film about family. Space whales? Yeah. Or space whales. But it's a film about family. And in Avatar... With Avatar 2, uh, the, uh, the uh, you know, stereotypical space marine fella, well, his son is the feral rat boy that you were just making fun of, Jack Champion. Yeah. And that adds a degree of, um, I don't know, gravitas to the character an element of like he actually cares about something other than the mission mm -hmm. and suddenly that character has stakes whereas before he was just a literal cartoon mm -hmm. but why do yeah. you care about the little kid from the road warrior well because those are the same I, that's basically that's the same character right that little the little kid who runs around in the in the road warrior and like the second one i think right yeah, yeah. Uh, that's why spider. wouldn't you care about him He's a little kid. I don't care about him. This he is wants here. to get himself some hair strange uh, from baby Sigourney Weaver. Dude uh, is jacked in this movie. movie. Yeah. Well, he's probably, like, like, a 30, he's, he's yeah. probably like a 27-year-old male human. Like, that's how that's how acting usually works. Like, well, couldn't the, they, the like, shove probably... him up a little bit, though? Like, you know, kind of... 
Like, I don't feel like Does I know that so someone cut? said that it was ten years between the movies, but I don't feel like that's a ten year old boy. I, even a thirteen year old boy. There's very yeah. I'm gonna say he's at least twenty. <laughs> In real life, like the actor is twenty. It feels like it. he's Jack. Oh, he's I hope he's eighteen. Yeah. Well, I uh, hope he's George at least Jack. old enough that human growth hormone doesn't affect him as negatively as you know it could. Hopefully, post pubescent at least. Oh, it says here more than a decade after the Navi. Uh, so that's yeah, mm. ten years, eleven years. He's a, he is a eleven. He's clearly year old boy. eleven. Yeah. <laughs> he is just fucking ripped. Okay, that uh, makes Joel sense. Joel Chap, by the way, saying y'all ain't selling this movie to me. Uh, Val, if you were to sell this movie to Joel, how would you do it? How would I do it? All right. I find Marvel movies, for example, tremendously boring. I've hated all of the Star Wars movies. I'm a grumpy asshole when it comes to popular culture. Um, not all of the Star Wars movies, but just the bad ones. So basically all of the Star Wars movies. Hope. Yeah. Um, Empire Strikes Back. The reason for me for this Terrible. is that, in general, I think what makes sci-fi really good and the thing that we sometimes talk about on the show, Warmer 40,000, very good, is small characters in a gigantic world. I found that the original Avatar swung more towards Star Wars, whereas in this one, it felt to me as though you had the protagonist and his family in a very large, very scary, potentially kind of sexually interesting world, and you were along with them for the ride of of trying to like, you know, they were literally the fish out of water story. It's it's, mm -hmm. it's about water this one. And so I think, I think that's important. I think that's what it nailed it was that it's taken almost entirely from the eyes of the children, right? right? Like, right. Mm -hmm. it's really only uh, Jake and um, his wife's name, who I forget, Zoe Saldana. Uh, like, they, they it's Richard. only seen from their perspective for, like, minutes. Um, mm -hmm. And then it's, you know, three hours and 20 minutes of, like, these kids experiencing a new world, um, which is good because it's a new world to us. So it, like, a lot of the wonder that they see projects – um, as a father, like the small child, whenever she's like playing with uh, the animals and things like that, like you see my I see my daughter in that and how she acts. Um, so there's a mm -hmm. connection there. Um, and then there's like the intense fight scene at the end where Zoe Saldana kills like 60 some odd people with with a bow and a knife in in like just like amazing choreography yep. uh mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. gives you the greatest biggest chub ever because it was so well done it was amazing i think dude. james cameron spent six years storyboarding the last hour and a half of this movie because mm -hmm. it's almost flawless action uh throughout yeah. there yeah um danny yeah. tell us I, about I, that kind of that climactic sequence and then val we'll get to you here yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I'm really happy that they kind of, like much of the rest of the movie, they just, uh, as this was a remake of Home Alone, they really kind of like really captured that that moment um, where Kevin McAllister defends his home base at uh, mm -hmm. Three Brothers Rock, um, where like this takes place. And so the the kid, the, the son, the, the, uh, the middle son, uh, the one who doesn't die, um, he, uh, he really... <laughs> he really works hard. That's the and, shittiest uh, spoiler I've ever heard. <laughs> the one who does, the, the, How, the, but the when one it happens, you're like, die. oh yeah, oh yeah, that's the one that hasn't talked for the entire movie. So <laughs> like, it was like, oh yeah, like, obviously, yeah, okay. he's the one oh. who like is basically a trope. Yes, I don't think that was too unfair, Danny, because it was obvious what right. it happened. I mean, okay. yeah, it was like, okay, well, this character is the least interesting of all the characters, except for maybe the baby. Mm -hmm. I kind of wish the baby would have died, but you know, they probably much. can't do that. Yeah. They'd already killed the baby whale. They couldn't kill both babies. That's true. They baby did kill a tough. baby whale. That was that was heart wrenching. See, Danny, I, I do want to interject. Excuse me, yeah, I'm yeah, also on the desk. Excuse yeah, me, yeah, I'm yeah, also please. on the deck, John. I have a question for our co-host. Go ahead, you Danny. I have a question. So you got three old ass dads up here, and we we have kids, and you know we're sentimental now. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm curious to know if that maybe tainted our view of it because I was very involved in like when the kids were in danger and the movie's fucking with you all the time putting the kids in danger dad's gotta come and save them and eventually they learn how to save themselves except for the bro who does save everyone else so i mean that's nice yes. but anyway so like that did get me really invested in it because it was so family focused now is that because i have a kid or is that because 
of family? Were you still like drawn in by the whole fact that they really made those characters really meaningful because they were a little tight knit nuclear family? Well, I mean, I have, I have, you know, nephews. And so like, and while that may be, you know, not, that's not the same as having like kids of my own. Um, like the concept of family is really important to me. So as a family oriented person, I think it did affect me in a, in a great way. Like I, I cared a lot about the characters, mm-hmm. like, the, and the characters were all for the most part, pretty good. Like yeah. they were decent characters. Um, most of them, uh, they weren't super one dimensional. Um, uh, but, uh, the, and like that had me invested in their adventures and like the whole sense of avatar and the sense of wonder as they explore the world as children is like amplified. So I think that they really kind of played up to that, uh, in the movie. Yeah, I think it was just the water tribe people that were shitty and one dimensional, like yes. all of them. Well, they all the non characters. I liked when like, they were like, "Look at their tails! Look at their skinny little tails! They haven't even got big arms." Well, like even the chief <laughs> was pretty one dimensional. Uh, yeah, but the chief had some gravitas, though. Chief had some like later. savagely good gravitas. And then he was like, the "Chief, this guy's the chief." chief. Uh, is played by actor C C H Pounder. That's his name. <laughs> Apparently, all the actors had previous careers in a different industry. For real. Uh, CCH Jack Pounder. Champion, CCH oh, Ish Sorry. Sorry, the mother was Rip Torn not available Pounder. for the show. Nope. Uh, so yeah, CCH Pounder, which is short for Carol Christine Hilaria Pounder. Uh, she was in the X Files. Yeah, CCH Pounder. That's the mom. <laughs> That's the mom, the mom. Yeah. Strong hair. No, actually, no. Kate Winslet was the mom. Yes. Kate, Kate Winslet was the wife of the water chief or the reef yes. chief. And she um, she was and good. He was played by Cliff Curtis. Mm-hmm. Oh, From CCH Pounder is uh, Saldana's mother. Yeah. 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 I'm, yeah. P, I appreciate that joke there about Custody Cliff. Uh, that, that was a good one in there. What were your guys' wow moments? Because there's a couple of them throughout the movie. Uh, where there, there's obviously complaints where like the middle is a little bit slow um, and it doesn't follow the traditional blockbuster formula of gang gets together, gang falls apart, CGI fight battle in the third act that we've been so accustomed to in the last 10 years from Marvel. What were some of your wow moments from this movie? Um, when um, the the big bad finds his dead body, his own dead body. And um, they ask him if he wants to take the body back and he's holding the skull in like a Horatio moment and then just crushes it. Uh, I liked that quite a bit. I also like already mentioned the Zoe Saldana fight scene. Like that Mm -hmm. whole fight scene is incredible, but her character in it, um, like when she like picks up the guy with her bow and throws him at the other guy to block the shots and like how it's all kind of put together. It was go- like, I, it, I was amazed. Um, and then like just a couple of the early water scenes with the family, when they're getting used to the water, just mm-hmm. like that wonder and that like the, the way that they're, they're filmed. It's like, I really enjoyed that. Val. The, the, uh, first, the first of says, all, first of all, I just, I just want to, I just want to say that I just looked up like who all these people actually are, and CCH Pounder. Everyone would know her. She is like a veteran of television, TV yeah. dramas of like every law. I've got to feel like she's in every Law and Order that exists. She may have been the DA in one of them, but she is a, a bloody institution. And I, and I take back anything that may have suggested I thought otherwise. I would say my big wow moment was wow, that's Edie Falco. Like that was I was impressed. She got work. It was it was I was it was nice. I haven't seen her since Nurse Jackie. Really, has she been around since? Like when was the last time we saw Eddie Falco? I wreck it, Ralph. Too Ralph breaks the internet. Excellent. Yeah. Well, big nice big uh, big moment for her. She got to she got to walk around in an exoskeleton, and I also enjoy that for whatever reason she was always sipping a hot cup of coffee. Uh, it was it was an excellent the, it was an excellent character the, choice. The robot hand held the coffee, and you have to imagine the the weeks of training she had to go through in order to be able to drink coffee uh, from far away. Yeah, imagine. Uh, okay, hold on. imagine. Think about that. The inception <laughs> yeah, of the yeah. coffee. Bruce Day. Right? You got it. Did we? Are we on the same? Are we on the same train of thought, Val? You go ahead, man. 
Oh no, I was just I was just thinking that when they were shooting it, she would just be like sipping a coffee on a friggin' green broomstick and it would be ridiculous. <laughs> and I don't understand how anyone wants to be an actor anymore because it would just <laughs> suck. You would just go into work every day and just just like embarrass yourself for 12 hours. You have to yeah, feel sorry know. for the be guy hard. whose job it is to hold the broom and tip the coffee at the right time. <laughs> That's right. Right. Yeah, Edie Falco, like he screwed me up with his cup timing. Now you were you perhaps had a different angle on this, Danny, the Inception cup. No, no, I was no, well. I'm not really a coffee drinker, but like uh, I would like the whole the whole idea of pretending to drink a cup of coffee while pretending to drink like like it's like it's layers of like a, like acting that are just absolutely wild to me to like imagine trying to do that. Like I don't know, it's uh. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, it's very talented to pretend to drink a cup of coffee. Can I just say the the baby exosuit? <laughs> yeah, but she's got to move the... her hand like this, right, to drink. To sorry, sorry, to pretend to drink the coffee, right, while a dude is holding that green that that broomstick attached to a coffee cup. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's why they get paid the big bucks. That's that's I guess so. <laughs> we're we're gonna try and recreate that scene in LVO. It's Perfect. Fine. We'll get it working. Uh, coffee's gonna be those, piping hot guys <laughs> it, it won't be because we'll have to wait for three hours for starbucks in the morning but the whole idea oh, of that the little skinny uh exosuits was ridiculous i, I hated those with a passion um they have really? the big beefy ones yeah. I, I didn't like the little skinny ones i thought that, go on yeah wh- that was why it. didn't you like those because they were they skinny just, I think it looked bizarre. So they most of the times you saw them, they were walking beside the the Navi Marines, yeah, or kind of like other guys, and it just it looked bizarre because like it was like it's like someone's like, hey, this is like five thousand dollars over budget or whatever money is used there. It's like, well, like well, we can make less metal on the arms, make it skinnier. Like, cool, do that. Uh, like it just it was a bizarre design choice for those things. See, oh, I would I, conversely, conversely, I would say that I thought that it was cool that they kind of mirrored the size and shape of the Navi instead of them being the like alien aliens exosuit. And they also seem more nimble. So when they were actually interacting and like fighting and doing combat stuff, they yeah. looked they looked quicker. They actually, were anyway. one with their technology. Uh, Kelsey, by the way, Pete, looking at Peter reminds me that I really want a man of 40K calendar. So your pose worked. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's what I was going for um, this whole time. I think for me, one of the, the wow moments, there, there was two that really stand out to me. One was when um, a younger brother gets abandoned at the Three Brothers Reef. Yeah. Uh, and then he's being chased through Coral by just a murderous shark thing that will not give up. And there's a part where he's at like, there's no more Coral. There's no more thing. And then you see him start to run out of breath where I was generally like, oh, oh shit. It's like, what's going to happen? Um, that was really well done. And then the other one is the, the Tukan's assault uh, on the whaling ship. Mm. Um, that one was just phenomenal. Like, and that Tukan giant... fucks up that ship. Oh, yeah. Dude, it does. The best part so is much... so what this. Yeah. What about the missile this... deflection? That was what dope. this movie does oh, really yeah. well, Danny, is, is it uses dialogue to kind of. Um, tell you what's going to happen later so while they're doing that just horrific whaling scene at the start he quickly points like yeah i've got to shoot them from underneath because the tops are too armored like in a very throwaway line and then at the end he fires a harpoon and he just headbutts it out of the way and blows up the ship and then after that he kind of like looks right at the ship and kind of slides off into the water i'm like oh that guy's dead Uh, the fact that a whale got like really super involved in like hand-to-hand combat was Mm. sick like he slapped a dude like, Death. like, just Smash. like that, that is, like that is that is incredible. Where and also there was like verisimilitude involved in the whale doing hand to hand combat. Like he was a whale beached on a deck. He didn't look athletic. It's not like suddenly knew, learned how to like walk on his tippy toes on his dorsal fins or something. No, this was a whale who's just beached on a boat who's super pissed and just wrecks all kinds of ass. And I just, I just genuinely enjoyed that they like they didn't like. I don't know. There was no moments that pulled me out of it. It was like if a whale managed to to like get revenge on the you know various scientists from Japan who were hunting him, he mm-hmm. would probably do it this way. Uh, Have you ever gone whale in a really watching? baddest way? Pardon? Have you ever gone whale watching? I sure have. I thought you, 
So like, you'd ask me if you go and Have you ever it. had like the whale go under the ship? Um, like underneath? Yeah. I mean, Spooky. probably. Like, yeah, it's probably spooky. That's it's my every time I've done it, it's my like worst nightmare come to life. I'm just waiting for like this avatar scene to happen to me. I'm just waiting for it to just be like, fuck all y'all. I'm coming on board too. Huh. Um, so yeah. So I really loved it. Yeah, I agree. That was a good what? scene. I mean, I might sound like a bleeding heart for the whales, guys, but I mean, let's not forget that the you know big whale lobby has softened the name of the killer whale to Orca. But let's remember that they are killers. And I think that is something that Avatar 2 does really drive home nicely. I didn't like the part where they're like, this toolcat, he is outcast. You can't pair with him. Why is he an outcast? He led an attack against whalers. That was his crime, and he got people killed. You're like, well, that's not super cool. Uh, and they're like, well, that's their rules. We got to follow them. And they kind of move it like that was his entire crime was trying to stop a whaling ship. Well, by whale law, John. Um, well, uh, he hey, was please, not allowed. About whale law. Yeah, he was not allowed to attack the ship, even in retribution. He had to just mm -hmm. either flee um, or uh, die. Whales in uh, in the Avatar series are Jesus. They turn the other cheek always. Yep. Or armor. <laughs> like echolocation horn one of those things you yeah you guys are with me though like you expected all of the whales to roll up like yes yeah. like yeah, i was I expecting a march of the ants but like look yeah. they, they they stuck to their their credo like those mm -hmm. other whales exactly because they're smart so, whales because those guys, whales aren't going to attack until avatar 3 i was gonna say what's important avatar 2 <laughs> avatar 2 and 3 were originally one movie but James Cameron was like, hey, guys, someone's going to sit through eight hours of this. And people are like, J James, no, no, no one's going to sit through eight hours of it. Like, no, they will sit through eight hours of it. Uh, but then they split it up into two movies. Uh, guys, I do want to touch on some other things before we get going. Uh, but what do you think the future holds for Avatar 3? The Fire Nation is going to attack. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's happening. Like in a it second. The Fire Nation. Okay. Fire. That's it. There's nothing else. So they're just going to go live in a volcano or some shit, you think? I think there's fire Navi and they're going to attack. The fire people. Yeah, and I yeah. think they're going to be so hot-blooded and uh, uh, ill-tempered that they're going to the 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 forest Navi are going to have to like try and talk them down like, "Look, you can yeah. take out these guys, but you can't wholesale just slaughter their cities." And the yeah. fire Navi are going to be like, "Dude, whatever, you're lame. Watch yeah. us." Uh, yeah. I live in a volcano. Though. Yeah, dude, uh, what Sam, are you going to do about it? Sam in chat letting us know, <laughs> don't you remember, the whales are so smart and better at philosophy and mathematics than us humans. Um, no one is saying James Cameron can write a good dialogue sequence. That That is mm -hmm. not what we're here for. But holy shit, can he do a, a phenomenal two-hour action sequence. <sighs> um, which, yeah, which makes you forget time exists. I, yeah, I won't lie to you. When when I look to the when I look at the like knowing and like very disappointed, sad eyes of an elephant, I do perhaps wonder maybe they're good at poetry and philosophy, and we should maybe and we should killers. stop taking their teeth. They're just bad at math. That's the main problem. All animals. Are we like evil <laughs> elephant tooth fairies? Is that is that no, like a human? No, we're we're evil elephants that figured out math. We're oh. rapey murder monkeys. Like, if bears figured out math, we'd be fucked. Like, yeah, I'm, totally. this is oh. something I've believed for years. Uh, not to go overrated. on a tangent or anything, but bears are messed up creatures. They are soulless murder things. And if they knew math, we would be fucked. They're so one dimensional. Another, they don't they sleep half the year. Yeah. So, for, for six months of the year, Val, we would be hiding in fear. And if they'd figured out math, They'd have the best beds in the world, but luckily, you know, for six the months year, of the year, for six yeah. months of the year, we would be murdering them in Look, their sleep as humans do. Knew, if First they of knew all, math, they would be able to figure out how many calories they needed per day to be awake during the rest of the year. Yeah, I guess people sleep point, half of their life away in a bed, so like that argument is bad. Yeah. Secondly. We're fucked. Bears don't don't have to sleep during the winter. They choose to. So take that into account when you think about like how dangerous them. And three, winter only lasts six months in Canada, buddy. Like I think <laughs> I imagine, I imagine I think, a bear at the entrance of a camp being like, "This is my choice. I don't have to." <laughs> my body, my choice, fuckers. It just goes. Are dead. you suggesting? 
Are you suggesting that bears just go on just like they just send it for like for for half the year without sleeping and then they just sleep for six? Like you're telling me a, a bear is 24 hours a day, seven days a week from yeah, like what, May is through a bear October. Day. 24 hours a day, seven days a week oh. for six months. And then bears it's just so sleep. fucking hardcore. <laughs> That they just decide to sleep for six oh. months. They don't have to. They just well, they've made that decision. They've already they eaten all math. the food, Peter. They and have they nothing don't to know eat. Math. So yeah, and so they can't like they can't count like their stores and know how much food they yep. should store in their cave. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it's it, it just makes sense. Like the only reason why we don't have to worry about dolphins and whales because I'm sure they know math. I'm sure someone has figured mm -hmm, out probably. that they know fucking yeah. math. It's because they're in the ocean and we're mm -hmm. we're fucking them that way. We're just like throwing our our plastic bags there. Um, Got but bears. Are you like, how open. many plastic bags can you count, fucker? Throw yeah, that in there. Basically, yeah. But like bears, we would be fucked. I'm so glad yeah. bears are dumb. Like, I'm so glad that they just don't understand uh, arithmetic or geometry. Like, if they bears start doing shapes, we are done. Kill them all immediately. The first time you see a bear point at a circle, you're like, get out. <laughs> just everybody leave. <laughs> Oh boy, man! Avatar two, what a great like movie! Like a berry, <laughs> <laughs> just like man. Guys, no way, but no. If you thought the first Avatar was boring, buy your ticket. Uh, go watch just the last hour and a half. Uh, yeah, don't like skip the, the first half hour. You don't miss anything Do it. because I skipped the first hour and I just assume I didn't miss anything. <laughs> <laughs> ja James Cameron's ability to film sequences with water or underwater is oh, yeah, God. stunning. Oh. Uh, definitely worth it. Yeah. One, one final interjection. Another thing I think they did it for me with Avatar is they just were like, you know what? We're not gonna like really hang this movie on like real actors with the animated stuff. Like it's also mocap and things like that, so it's also like mm -hmm. like real acted and all, the action is all done at some point. But I feel like they really put a lot less scenes where that's going to pull you out. So like the humans yeah. with the Navi and all that kind of stuff. So that right. was really clutch. Too. And there's very little talking. And I think yes. someone in chat mentioned it earlier because of like the bad script writing. I think that's for the best. Like, you know, yes. can I make one uh, like one more one more statement? I'm sorry. I know Love we it. keep doing this, right? So, no, you're good. You're uh, good. Just want to like I would can't recommend enough people go see it in 3D. I think it's worth mm -hmm. it. Um, like oh, yeah. do a when did job when did ambiance. 3D get good? They, One sec. These movies, <laughs> these movies are the only good 3D movies. I did not I see like, it in 3D. I shit. saw it. I cool. saw it in standard 2D. I did oh, not even see even it. Think they released it in 2D. 3D. I didn't either. But when I got to the theater, it was uh, it was certainly there were no glasses, and are I just watched. Are you sure the movie that it wasn't 3D? Up. They just didn't have 3D. You just watched a blurry movie, and you were like, "He was wearing wow. his apple fingers." <laughs> you're like, "I was wearing these glasses." <laughs> these are actually 3D glasses, guys. What are you guys talking about? It looked awful. It was blurry. <laughs> <with your eyes. laughs> so dark. I will say, apparently, the D-Box experience is quite good because I sat in the row in front of the D-Box people, and I was shaking. So I, like, they were really oh, having a time. Oh, the 4D experience. Now, yeah, what is yeah. this D-Box? Yeah, what's the D-Box? Oh, so it's like um, like a lot of theaters it's have a 4D it. movie? What Cineplex calls them is D-Box, but it's the, the seat, like, has speakers built into it, and it moves and shakes when Ooh. things happen. Oh, that's uh, cool. So it's like an extra Was it also effect. 3D? Uh, yeah, it's the same. Like it's yeah. in the same right. theater as the regular 3D, but During there's like a couple, couple of rows scenes that, are set that just tries for that. to. All right, to I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna plug my uh, my sex braid into the old D box, <laughs> fire <laughs> on some 3D goggles, and go have a party, man. Let's do this. God. Usually, for, it's not about, your braid for, you put in the D box. For LVO, can you make yourself a special set of producers' headphones that connect to the computer via a hair braid that comes out the back? <laughs> Can you also grow a hair braid for LVO? Please. I mean, please. probably not in time, but I could get an extension. Like I do, like we could do that. I mean, it's okay, not let's not pay for hair impossible. extensions for all yeah. of us for LVO. Let's, hey, let's do it. Let's all have one rat guys. tail. <laughs> this is all I want now. I'm going to put it in on, my, uh, my rider is I need hair extensions for LVO. Guys, if you were on YouTube, Val needs your financial support in order to get right Pete's hair to extensions. Yep. You can buy 25 uh, cents. the <laughs> Sir Val Val. shirt. Uh, Val has shirts on our YouTube store now. Uh, and that's all that's there uh, because I don't have logos. If all of you else. could super chat $5, 
Yes. All five that of you. It? That oh. should be enough for one hair extension for me. Yes. <laughs> and that's I all really, that matters. <laughs> that's all that matters. Please. <laughs> oh. Guys, I was I was legitimately saving like ten minutes at the end to talk about Henry Cavill doing Warhammer stuff. But I'll one, talk about it tomorrow. One, uh, you can check Pete out <laughs> on a different network uh, doing that tomorrow. Two, man, I'm really sick of the Warhammer community talking about Henry Cavill right now as either the second coming of Jesus or the worst thing to happen ever. Um, and it's, then three, it's a like uh, Avatar, Avatar two, uh, go see it. Uh, go see Avatar well, two. <laughs> Hell yeah! Wow, been waiting for him to do this for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's all I got. Pete, if, if people want more quality content, like what they just saw you do, where can they find you? <laughs> they can't. That's the thing. I've been on hiatus for a while, uh, so you're just not gonna see that anymore. That's just my thing. What? Maybe someday. Want to do an adjacent? But... Want to do an adjacent so- show on Wednesday? Let's do an adjacent show on Wednesday. I love it. I'm off Wednesday. All I was right. supposed to talk Fuck with Adam yeah. Camilleri, but I'll do that instead. Do it. There we go. You can see us Wednesday on the Honest on War the Gamer show. on Wednesday on the adjacent show. And Jay Rob doesn't show know show. yet, but we're going to do it. No, he knows. He knows. Well, good. You pre-booked him. Um, amazing. Yeah, guys, final thoughts before we sign out here uh, for the year. Danny. I love you all. And I'll miss you until I see you again. Surprisingly, uh, but there, uh, all I can see is the saliva on Pete's microphone there. There's like yeah, hairs on it, too. It's, yeah, it's it was pretty a poor gross. choice. It was a poor choice. Val, Val uh, anything you want to wrap up here real quick? Well, I feel well, incredibly overexposed because I can't hide uh, where I am right now. Uh, and so um, I just want to say that I look forward to uh, the LVO production, we have a team of 12 people that we're bringing in, at least, maybe 13. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, none Lucky. of uh, it's that, that's probably like two or three people who have to suffer some sort of injury before I have to press the buttons. But I will tell them what buttons to press. So that'll go well. And then uh, and uh, I'm just really, really, really amped up for, for good times of Christmas, New Year's, and to see you guys all in 2023. Yeah. Uh, guys, we're going to wrap things like up here. The three is meaningless. With the video that we were supposed to play with the, the end credit scene. Um, guys, Danny, Val, and I, we are taking next week off for Christmas so we can force our families to spend time with us. So we will be back the first week of January 2023. Um, have an amazing Christmas, Hanukkah, or, or anything you celebrate. Uh, and then join us January for our Road to the LVO as we cover the biggest stories and shit talk the most things going up to all I can see is Pete's eye going up to <laughs> the biggest Las Vegas open of all time. Uh, my name is John. It's been pretty grim after dark. Val, roll the trailer uh, one last time. I drink Dr. Pepper, don't you see? Because it's the perfect taste for me. Original taste, you know, is making peppers everywhere I go. Go to the LVO.